In this video, we will be exploring how to display quantitative data. Quantitative data represents counts or measurements. If you're confused whether data is qualitative or quantitative, ask yourself a question about the data that is being collected. If you answer with a number, the data is quantitative. If you answer with a noun that is not a number, the data is qualitative. For example, if you were asked how tall you are, you would answer in feet and or inches. That is quantitative data. On the other hand, if you were asked what your favorite song is, you would answer with words or phrases that were not numeric. That would be qualitative data. Quantitative data can be displayed using either histograms or line charts. Histograms are basically bar charts where the data categories are quantitative. The bars on a histogram are displayed in numerical order and each bar may represent a range of numbers. In fact, that is what is usually the case. Because of this, there are no gaps between the bars in a histogram unless no data is present in a particular range of values. These ranges of values are sometimes referred to as bins. For our study today, I've entered random exam grades from a class into column A of our worksheet. Notice they are in random order. Before I decide how to display this data, I am going to order the data. To do that, we will select the data in question from A2 down to A31. Then we will go to Data. And under that ribbon, you'll see the sort. And I'm, it doesn't really matter whether you're going to sort from smallest to largest or largest to smallest, but because of the way I want to display it, I'm going to go from smallest to largest. In a blink of an eye, there you have it. The grades run from 42 to 100, and we can easily see how many we have in each category. The second thing that we need to set up here before we can actually create our histogram are our bin ranges. And I'm going to put those over in column B. Normally when we sort grades we think of them from 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, and so forth. So what I'm going to enter is the highest number that I want present in the bin. Because these are whole numbers, I do not have to worry about going to values that are out to the nearest tenth or hundredth or so forth. My lowest grade is 42, so that would fall in the bin from 40 to 49. I'll put a value of 49 here. Then I don't have any grades, as you notice, that fall in the 50s. However, we have to account for them. If there are no grades present from 50 to 59 in our histogram, that's when we have a gap. So I'll put 59 in the second row, 69, 79, 89. Normally I would put 99 if I wanted to keep the same number in each bin range, which I like to do. However, I do have one grade that's 100, and I don't want them out in a separate category of their own, so I'm going to put a value of 100 into that one. Now that we have our bin ranges all set, we're ready to create our histogram. To do that, we are going to go to data, if you're not already there, and all the way over to the right. Remember back a few screencasts ago, we installed the data analysis tool pack. Today we're actually going to use that. We want it to build our histogram, which is one of our options. When I click on OK, it is going to ask for some values. The first value that it wants is the input range. So I will select the grades. The second item that it wants is the numbers that are our bin range, which are right there. So we will select those as well. You have the option of putting the histogram on a second sheet, but I'd actually like it there right with the data. So I am going to select output range instead. Then I have to go over and click on a cell that I would like the frequency 
chart to be displayed on. I am not going to select labels because I did not include in my input and binge range labels. I think it's actually easier to put them in later, but I certainly want the histogram to show. So remember to check off chart output. Once you've done that, click OK. And there we have our histogram. Now it's by no means done yet. So what we're going to do first is make it a little bit larger so that we can see it. I clicked on the inside of it and I'm going to draw it out to make it bigger. These are fairly easy to edit. You'll notice it's created a frequency chart for us. We can see exactly how many grades were in the 40 range, the 50s range, the 60s range, so forth and so on. The first thing that I want to do is change the bin to accurately represent what is in each column. It's just not the grade 49 or 59 or 69. It's the grades in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s. And I can do that not initially, but now. Once the histogram has been built, I can change 49 to 40 through 49, 50 through 59, 60 through 69, 70 through 79, 80 through 89, 90 through. I also have a more there that I don't really want, so I'm going to go down and delete that. And notice when I delete it, it disappears from my histogram. There are other ways to get rid of it as well. The next thing I need to do, because this is continuous data, is to get rid of the gaps. Remember I said there could be no gaps at all on a histogram unless there was no data in that particular bin. To do that, I am going to click on any one of the bars. Then I'm going to right click go down to Format Data Series. In the 2013 version of Excel, remember that shows up as a pane of its own on the right hand side. For those of you that are, do not have that latest version, it's going to show up somewhere in your Excel sheet, usually to the right of your histogram. Notice right away what pops up is gap width. And right now we have a gap width that's 150 percent of our bar width. We do not want that. We have two options. We can either enter the percentage that we want, or we can click the up and down arrows. Now you don't have to go down to exactly 0%. If you want to see exactly where one column ends and the next one begins, it's fine to put a gap of perhaps 5%, but no more than that. As soon as I click off of that, notice what happens. Now I do not have gaps. The only tiny white lines I have there are just for aesthetic purposes. We certainly could outline the histogram as well and that would do the same thing. What I'm really doing here is creating a white outline around my columns. We do not need this frequency label on the right hand side so I'm going to click on it and then delete it. I would like to have a label other than just histogram so I'm going to go up here and change histogram to math exam grades. Frequency is always the label you want on the vertical axis, but you should change the label that's on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to click on and highlight bin and change it to grades. There you have it. A very nicely constructed histogram. Before I end, I'm going to come down to sheet number one, change that to math grades histogram to label my sheet. The second method of displaying quantitative data is to create a line chart. This type of chart will look familiar to you, but like a histogram, it has a few special characteristics. We will start by copying our data and putting it on a new worksheet page. However, we're not going to copy the original data. We're going to copy our sorted data. And that we have in our frequency chart. I'm going to select it, copy it, 
go down to plus to give me a new sheet, and then paste, control V. Now we are ready to create our line chart. Before we actually select that option from insert chart, we're going to do a little bit of prep work. And to show you why, I'm going to go back to our histogram just for a moment. A line chart is actually created by going to the center of the bin value and then drawing a line from the center point of that top edge all the way up to the center point of the next edge. I can show you what I'm talking about here by inserting a line. I'll take it out later. I don't want to leave it in my histogram, but for this purpose it will help. So I'm going to go over to Shapes, select Line. It's really created by drawing a line that will go from here to here. I can actually change its color. And then you keep on going by inserting more lines. So I'd go over from here to here and put in a line. And then from here to here create a line. It used to be, especially before we started using Excel, that when people had to create line charts, they'd actually create the histogram first and then build the line chart off of that. From the other side of this, if I were to keep going, I would go from the center there down to the bottom. When there's nothing in a particular bin, we go back to zero, put in another line. You can see where this is a tedious process. still not quite done. Uh, if you were doing this by hand, then you would need two more lines. One going from the center of the first column off to the left down to the axis, and the final one going from the last bar on the right down to the center of the next bin right here. And that's because sometimes they're called frequency polygons. Remember from your study of geometry, a polygon is a closed figure created from lines. For this figure to be closed, that means we have to use the X or the horizontal axis as one of our lines. So that's where we get a polygon. And as I said, this is a fairly complex process if you're doing it by hand, especially if you're building it piecemeal like I just did off of a histogram. You'd want to copy the histogram, put it on the new sheet, then once you're done building it, change all of the column colors to white and so that all you would see left would be the lines. It gets a little messy. We can do that a lot faster with Excel. So I'm going to go to back to sheet two and do some prep work. Because we want our lines to go to the middle of every bin, I am going to take the median middle value of each one of these bins and put those in there instead of the range. So if we're going from 40 to 49, 44.5 is probably exactly the midpoint, but 45 is close enough for what we're doing here. And I'm going to change this one to 55, 65, 75, 85 and 95, just to get the points situated approximately where they should be. Now remember, both the left and the right side have to go back down to the x-axis, so I'm going to put in 105, and then give it a value of 0 because there aren't any grades that are that high. Also, I need to add a bin lower than 45, so I'm going to go on my home ribbon over to Insert, and I'm going to insert a row. Now I can put a 35 in here, and again, no grades that low, a 0 there. Now I'm ready to create my line chart. Go to Insert, and believe it or not, we're not going to Line. We are going to what looks like a scatter plot, and we're going to pick the option for scatter with straight lines and markers, and look what happens there. I can see right away that I'm going to get what I want. So I will select that, 
and there it is. Now I do want to clean it up a bit. Notice that its values seem to be a little bit off here and if you were trying to figure out what was happening it would not make much sense. So I'm actually going to edit this. Click on the chart so that I have all of the side options that I want. And I'd like to add a few things. I'd like to add axis titles. I'm going to change the title of the line chart afterwards. I would like to put in primary horizontal, primary vertical, and I'm going to look at more options here. I'm not really pleased with the way that this looks down here at the bottom, so I'd like to change that look completely. I'm going to select by left clicking the labels that I have on my horizontal axis. When I do that you can see that format axis appears on my right pane. And if you right clicked on that data while you were there for those of you with older versions you would get this option. I am going to go now to the bar that says axes and I'm going to click on that. That allows me to make some changes here. So I actually want my minimum to be 35 and my maximum to be 105. And you can watch everything now go into place so that it looks much nicer than what I had previously. My vertical axis counted off by 2. I would actually like that to count off by 1 and now I'm good to go as far as that. It looks much closer to what I had in my histogram. In fact, if I could superimpose one on top of the other, you would see that things lined up quite nicely. Now what I'd like to do before I finish is to change my title. And change my axes title. finally my horizontal axis title. And there I go. If I do want to make other changes I certainly can, but this gives you a good idea of what a line chart would look like for grades in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, so forth and so on. I do, before I finish, want to go down to my sheet and change this to math grades line chart. I hope this has helped with your presentation of quantitative data in Excel. Thank you for viewing.